Good morning, everybody. How are you all today? I am fantastic, thank you very much. You know, I'm just chilling out over here. And, oh, what? what is this? <gasps> That's right. I am moving on to Thorncraft today. I will still be covering some of the, um, the equivalent exchange mod and items and various other things as the updates come out. Um, but I thought it might be a good idea to, you know, move on and try and get some other content out there too, just so that people know I'm not just, you know, only equivalent in exchange. I do know how to use some of the other mods in the Technic pack. And, uh, yeah, I thought this would be a good time to start that. So, here we go. We're going to start right away. Uh, this is assuming that you already know, well, already have a whole bunch of uh, materials from, you know, vanilla. So if you find that you haven't got these materials yet, feel free to pause the video and try and go find them. And yeah, and we will uh, continue on like that. So here's what you start off with. You get a cauldron from the vanilla Minecraft. I'm only putting this in here now just because I know some people probably would have never used one of these. And it is made like so. So you need seven iron ingots and you place them like that and there you go. You can have a nice little bath in here if you put some water in it. Uh, if I can... Oh, yeah, there's a bucket of water. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you can have a nice little swim. And, yeah. <laughs> Not important. Right. So, here we go. The first proper Thorncraft item that you want to make is the Crucible. As you can see, it has a little bit of something in there, and I will get to that in a second. Some other items that you may have noticed around the world are Vise Crystals, so you may want to remember to collect them at all uh, appropriate times if you ever find them. Uh, the Crucible is made like so. It is made with one Vise Crystal. It doesn't matter what kind of crystal, it could be any one of these, as far as I'm aware of. I'm not quite sure about Tainted Crystals. Tainted Crystals are made a different way, so I just wanted to test. Uh, yep, yep, you can use those too. Fantastic, not a problem. And, okay, so something important to know about the Crucible is that you basically feed it items and you get taint, well, no, you feed it items and you get these from that. Now, this is the inherent energy that all items have, uh, to my best understanding. So each item has a level of, you know, these, just like all equivalent exchange items have a level of EMC. And that is pretty much how that goes. Um, that noise is kind of annoying. I'm going to turn that down if I can. Yeah, there we go. Cool, that's fine. But uh, by itself, it's not going to do much. If you throw items in there, it's going to produce more. But you're not going to be able to use it like that. It could overflow, and that would release Vs into your, you know, your aura. And uh, that is something that I'll get into later on, probably. Now, the next thing to get the vase out of this, you're going to need a vase conduit, which is made like so. Four wooden planks, four glass panes, and one redstone. And that will give you eight of these, the vase conduit. And what you can do is you just link it straight up to your crucible, and you'll connect it to probably one of these. Now this is called the infuser. Again, doesn't matter what type of vase crystal you place in here, just four ingots, three stone, and a stone slab. And you get this cool looking thing over here. Now, aren't those graphics amazing? I love this item. I think it looks really cool. And, but you're not going to, you know, uh, <laughs> sorry, my brain is uh, kind of, you know, lacking a little bit right now. Right. You're not going to want to keep your vase inside these because otherwise you're just going to, you know, keep running out. Or maybe you just want to store a whole bunch up for later so that you don't have to keep smelting your items. And to do that, you want to put your stuff into a vase storage tank. Now, these storage tanks are made like so, with enchanted wood and four glass panes, but oh, what is enchanted wood? How do we make that? Well, you grab this, you put in a vase crystal, doesn't matter what kind, you put in a piece of wood, and you get four enchanted wood. So then you put it in like that, and everything is magic. Now, in order to make the middle thing show up, I had to actually, you know, send vase in here. So that's why there's nothing in there, and only the tiniest bit in there. As you can see, there's actually a small amount of these inside the infuser. This is because uh, I have my vase crystal and wood here, so they're waiting to become enchanted wood. And if I throw in a couple... Can I throw in one of these? 
Yep, yeah, I can. And that put, you saw something go that way. And you saw a little bit more these over here. Now, this stuff in here is called taint. It's not these, it's not used in crafting this kind of stuff. But it is used for other things. Uh, having too much of it inside one of these tanks is quite dangerous. It actually causes an explosion and all the area around becomes tainted and it looks quite uh, hideous. But I will teach you how to get rid of that later. Right, now if I move over here, we've got the Vs Condenser. There's more than one way to get Vs once you've created one of these. Now if I go over to one of these, this is called the Vs Condenser. It is made like so. Vs Crystal. This actually does have to be a vanilla Vs Crystal. It can't be a Vaporous or Aqueous or all those different kind of whistles. <laughs> uh, and so we grab a couple of these. And what this will do is it will take your crystal, doesn't matter what kind, it'll place it like so. You'll see that it is drawing these from your aura. So everything around here, like your area has an aura. And what this feast crystal will do is draw that out of there and push it straight into this feast tank. Now you can see that I already had two being used. Uh, once a feast crystal has been used up, it becomes a tainted crystal, which is used for other things. But something important to note about this is that it's more effective based on what the moon is. So you see over here the moon is kind of slowly going away. If I change it like so, that is a full moon, half uh, quarter moon, half moon, almost gone. And this is the least, like, this is the worst time in the moon cycle that a condenser will be working. Because it needs a lot better... Uh, you know, moon phase. So if I put that back over here, this is going to be as fast as it will work. Uh, something else that's cool to note, if you have another one over here, the Vs will travel through this one and then through this conduit over here to in order to fill this up with uh, Vs here. So you don't have to connect all of these with conduit. They can uh, just be connected to each other. And that is how you create Vs like that. We will move on to the... Oh, I can never pronounce this word. It's very, very terrible. I don't like this word. Quasitum? Qu quas Quasitum? Quasitum? Quasimodo? No? Okay. It is made like so. Three gold ingots, three stone, an ink sack, a glass bottle, and a feather. So that would be your ink pot. That is how it's going to start, you know, doing some research. Got our gold. Everything, you know, has a price. And it is placed like so. So what you want to do is surround this just like you would an enchanter or enchanting table. You surround it with books, and there are some other types of items that you can surround it with. Uh, I'm not going to get to it in this video, but what you do is you can do something called research, believe it or not. So you place your item in here. See here, we've got a 12% chance of getting something. Uh, failure is for something else, and loss is the chance that your item is going to disappear after you're done researching it. So a 75% chance, there's only a 1 in 4 chance that I'm going to actually keep this item. And it continues on like that. See, I didn't. I managed to keep it that time. In order to increase your chance of success, at the moment it was only 12, I can place it like that. And now I have a 32% chance of actually getting something. Oh, and look at that, I got something. Now, you once you place things like that, you have a bunch of paper here. So you're going to have to have a large, you know, kind of uh, sugar cane farm in order to make more paper. But this paper is not used if you have a failed attempt at getting something. It is only used once it has to create something down here. Once you have created something down there, you can chuck that in there. And this fragment of knowledge can be used and researched in order to try and get something else. So if I keep going like so... Oh, oh no, I lost it. Well, I can try and use this one. Why not? So I keep on like that, and hopefully that's going to get me something. No, it didn't get me anything at all. Ah, that's a shame. Okay. Well, I might move on for that, like, while we wait for that to, uh, get along. <laughs> ah, waiting, waiting, waiting. Um, let's just pretend it gave me something. Oh, look, Magico, it gave me a theory. Yay. <laughs> now, what we do with that theory is we pop it in there. It will have varying ranges of difficulty. This one is trivial, so this is the easiest possible difficulty setting that you'll get. Um, it is a random chance that you will get that kind of difficulty. As you saw, it went down a little bit. That is because the chance of failure uh, mattered in that time. So if we pop it in again, we'll just get another one of those. 
chance of failure is 5%, so if you get a failure, you can see one of these little dots here would disappear. So we're going to get rid of that quickly. But our discovery was a Thormic Repairer. So what you do is you right click on that, and it will tell you how to create a Thormic Repairer. I'm not going to get into those right now. In fact, I'm going to throw this away. Eee! Fantastic. Ugh, rain, rain, go away. Don't go back. Right. So as you can see, that used up another bit of paper just so that I could get that theory. And you learn about a whole bunch of different items that are part of Formcraft. I'm not going to do any of the items that you have to research that will come in a later video as long as this particular video is uh, successful. If you guys like it, feel free to let me know. Uh, post things in the comment section if you have any questions about it. And once you have enough theories, uh, discoveries rather, the theory is the um, before you make it. Once you've got the discovery, you can surround the book, like so, and you get a Thormonomicron. Now what this will do is, if you open it up, you can go through all your different pages, and you can find each of your different items. As you can see, I've only ever found one, so this is the only thing that's going to end up showing up in my book. But once you do more, you'll end up getting everything else, and it will be fantastic. As you can see, I am missing 12 from the Eldritch, 8 from Tainted, 7 from Forbidden, and 20, well, 26 rather, from the lost uh, area of researching. So I'll chuck that away too. And I will probably put these books back. Cool. Alrighty, now moving on from that. If you end up traveling around, you may have seen some mini dungeons. And as you can see the note here, artifacts make good research material. So this might be an example of something that you'd find underground. You see a few items from other mods. A uh, minecart, you know, this, that, and the other thing. But some of these items have common forbidden artifact, or all these different artifacts. You can, you know, take some of these. Cracked wisp shell, that's made from killing the little flying uh, wisps that you see around. And you just place them in like so. They usually have a high percent chance of uh, being successful. And it is fantastic. <laughs> but we won't get into that right now. You just make sure that you remember that you can use them in order to help your research along. Alrighty. So here is a couple of uh, ingredients that I can show you. Well, rather, ingredients for other things that you can create. We've got Nitor here, and Alumitum. Alumentum? Alumentum? It's not aluminium. It's made from coal and redstone, and Nitor is made from glowstone and redstone. And Nitor actually has something pretty interesting. It is able to be used as a everlasting source of light. So I can right click here. Oh, no I can't. Okay. If I turn this off, am I able to? Nope. Okay, just checking. Anyway, you can place it against a wall. Or not. Am I thinking of the right mod? Of the right item? Maybe? Possibly? Probably not. I guess not. No, surely. You're supposed to be able to place it. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if that's only in, like, darkened areas or something. No? Nothing at all. Huh, maybe it's a bug. I'll, um... I don't know what to do about that. Either way, you should know that that item should be allowed to be placed against walls and be used as an everlasting, uh, source of light. But, I don't know. It's just not working for me right now. Anyway, moving on, uh, you may have noticed before, when I was talking about taint over here, if we go back over here, I labeled this as taint, you would have, uh, you know, put some items in there, maybe you went away for a little bit, you were trying to create some more enchanted wood, but you see that the thing has stopped, and you're not really sure why that is, because, you know, as you can see in there, you've got some stuff in there, you know, you should be able to create uh, the enchanted wood. But it's not working. You see, taint is horrible. Uh, if you have too much in a container, it will blow up, it will wreck the area around you, it will make it all evil and so forth. And it's just not really what you want to have around. So in order to make sure that you don't have taint in there, so that you're, you know, trying to figure out why you're not getting enough enchanted wood and so forth, we'll take this one beast conduit over here. Now, we've got a beast filter over here. It is made like so, with the elementum over there. There we go, Elementum, and our four enchanted wood, and it is looks like this. Now, if I place down this, 
it will pump that taint out of here and it will slowly release it into the aura. Now that's not, you know, particularly good for uh, our aura. You know, it makes the area a bit more evil and if you get too much uh, bad taint in your aura then it uh, has some very interesting uh, side effect, uh, effects, <laughs> rather. But, you know, such as the... Uh, such as the prize of progress and so forth. Yeah. Unless it makes the cool little animations. I love the little textures that they have. Like, they just look, they just do something for me. Anyway, uh, the last thing that I'll be covering in this particular video is Formium Ingots. It is created like so. So if you have a Beast Crystal and an Iron Ingot, it will create a Thormium Ingot. Now this table has a little bit left over, uh, Vsim here that I was using in order to make the item show up in the middle. And now Thormium ingots are pretty much just like any other ingot, like iron, gold, or can be used like diamonds as well. It helps you create the armor and tools, just like you normally would. Now, this stuff looks mm, a fair amount cooler, I'd reckon. So I'd put this on. Not sure about the mask, though. Cool. What do you reckon? Slightly covering my glasses though. I'm not sure if I like that. <laughs> I don't quite look as crazy anymore. Blah, 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 blah. Now if I go back over here. And I will show you these items. So that's our pickaxe, our sword, our axe, our hoe. Well, yeah, definitely hoe. It is not your mother. Let's leave your mother out of this. She's not that evil. Right, and our shovel. And it looks pretty much just like that. Now keep in mind that Thormium ingots are not just used for these kinds of items. They are used for other things. Uh, I'll only be showing you one of them, I believe. I think that's all I um, set up for you. Now it can create others, and <laughs> the only thing I set up here was the Arcane Tinkering Tool. Uh, in order to use the Arcane Tinkering Tool, I believe it is... Hang on. Alright, so, let's see if I can use this to, uh, now the arcane tinkering tool, if you chuck in anything like, say, wheat, if it is unsmelted, you can use it to retrieve the items from there before they all get smelted up. So say you accidentally chucked in a diamond block, so let's get some of those out. Let's not chuck too many in there, because it might overflow. There you go. See, before you lost too many, I think it only managed to smelt one. You managed to get the stuff out before that. Okay. Now, what it can also do is change the way certain things are facing. So if... Actually, no, I haven't covered any of those. If you have something called an arcane bore or a beast pump, you can uh, change the way that certain blocks are facing. So if I right-clicked a arcane bore of beast pump you can change the way it's facing sorry i just said that three times didn't i oh dear must be getting tired anyway i would have covered more but i'm not quite sure how much i'm allowed to uh cover with this mod because the mod creator is kind of iffy about that the mod's not finished uh and if you you know give away too much the intended gaming uh experience that the mod creator wants you to have won't have you know, being had, so, yeah. But, once the mod is completed, I do plan to finish off the rest of this. I may cover a few more things, like items that you get from research, if this video gets enough, uh, you know, good applause. Maybe some uh, nice comments down in the comment section, maybe uh, something like you telling me how much you uh, love me and want me to create more videos on the subject. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. If you have a positive or negative response to this video, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Otherwise, I will catch you guys later.